Hey everyone, it's Mom of Two, Wife of One, and if you're on my channel, welcome. If this is your first time, please, you know, do the notification bell, do the subscribing thing, do the commenting thing, do the liking thing. Like me, love me. Like my video. If you comment, I will definitely reply to you. I try to make sure this is engaging and we're having conversation as opposed to me just lecturing you for however long I do the video. So if you're here and you already read the title of the video in the description, you know that we are here to discuss and review and recap and complain about Mary at First Sight, season 12, episode 10. This is the episode where Dr. Viviana, who is a sex therapist, is when she comes to visit all the couples to talk to them about how they're doing with intimacy. It's always one of my favorite episodes of the season because a lot of people mistake I won't say mistake intimacy for sex, but I guess they kind of combine them and don't really focus on the other parts of intimacy that aren't related to the actual physical act of sex. And all the couples had a lot to say to Dr. Viviana, and I knew that she was going to present them. One thing, I'll take a step back. One thing I love about Dr. Viviana is that she gives them specific homework or tools or resources that is specific to whatever their issue is. Most of them do get a bowl full of questions that help them to have a frank and honest conversation about their history with sex. And sometimes it's questions like, you know, what can I do to turn you on? What is your favorite sexual position? Things like that. And some people may be uncomfortable with that kind of talk, but it's forcing you to have those kind of conversations because even though this person is still relatively new to you, at this point, all the couples have been married for a little over three weeks. And you're married. So it's assumed that at some point you're going to have sex if you haven't already. And these kind of conversations are going to come up. So you might as well talk about it now. And I feel like talking about it now will kind of set the foundation for the rest of the marriage. You won't have to worry about guessing things later on, even though obviously things change the longer you're married. But at least you've already had that frank conversation. And the more you have conversations like that, the easier it is to continue to have them throughout your marriage. So we'll start, I'd normally do Paige and Chris last because they normally piss me off the most, but I'm going to start with Paige and Chris this time because I'm at the point where I'm just, I'm tired of seeing them on my screen. I no longer root for Paige, not that I wish her harm, not that I want her to be miserable, but it's hard to root for someone who is going back to a situation over and over and over again that is showing no improvement. She's gotten nothing out of this experiment at all thus far. So last episode, she and Chris met up and basically they decided to reset the clock and let's start over as friends. And it's like, I don't agree. I don't think they should reset. I think they should just be like, okay, we're gonna get divorced and just leave it at that. And the fact that he keeps calling and she keeps answering is what bothers me. As soon as a man tells me I want a divorce, okay, we no longer need to discuss things then. Let me get my lawyer together. The lawyers can hack it out. Fortunately, we don't have any mutual, you know, assets that we have to split up. We'll, you know, do this amicably. I don't hate you. You don't hate me. Let's let the lawyers figure it out. But you and I have nothing left to discuss. So I'm going to block your number because we don't need to be friends either. And that's going to be that. And of course, it's never that easy. So they decided we're going to, you know, set things over from the beginning. And so when we see her this episode, she says that that was two or three days ago. I have not heard from him. He doesn't call me back when I call him. He doesn't answer my text messages. He hasn't come over. So she's like, nothing's really changed. And it's like, are any of us surprised? Oh, who's surprised is Paige? Like, why? So Dr. Viviana, again, is visiting all the couples. So when she does, Dr. Viviana's com coming, she does text Chris to say, hey, Dr. Viviana's coming. I think that we both need to sit down and talk with her to figure out what our next steps are. And he comes and well, I hate when a guy doesn't call, doesn't text, knows that you've been calling and texting him. You've blatantly been ignoring this woman and then you walk through the door like nothing happened and she doesn't hold him accountable. So then she sees him, she's just like, oh, hey, how are you? You look nice. Oh, you look nice too. Okay. It's like, no, my first thing would have been like, so your phone obviously works because you got my last text message. So I don't understand why you didn't answer my other texts and my other calls. That's the kind of person I am. Maybe it's aggressive. I don't care. But I feel like I need answers right away. We don't need to pretend like nothing's wrong. We don't need to pretend like our marriage is great. But I need to know from you before an expert gets here, what the heck do you want? If you don't really want this, then why do you keep calling me? Why are you still trying to meet up with me? Why can't you just let the situation go? You've already mentally let me go. So why physically are you still hitting me up? Again, I need answers to those kinds of questions because who... who 
she keeps saying and that's the other thing Paige keeps saying i hate for my time to be wasted but you're allowing him to waste your time so there really must not be a pet peeve for you if you keep allowing him to call you and you keep showing up don't understand that at all but whatever and another thing he said which pissed me off when he first got there he was doing his talking head and he was like yeah i'm here because i've his exact words but i wrote them down i have paused my thoughts of divorce for now and i hate him saying that because everything has been on his terms his terms his turf his rules his regulations his boundaries and i want her to take her power back and say you know what i don't want this i think i want to go through with the divorce so let's let them handle it and i'll talk to you or see you whenever but she doesn't do that and i'm just like mm, I, I can't with you right now Paige. but okay so something let me see what else happened okay so this is just another small thing so when they're there waiting for dr vivian to come they're not having any kind of conversation at all they're just sitting on the couch and then the knock comes on the door he she looks at him i guess expecting to open the door and he's like no it's your house and this is the house, mind you, that the show has paid for with the intention of the couples living there as a married couple. So that's the house that they're having this meeting in. And the fact that he even calls it her house lets me further know that he has no interest in moving there and no interest in moving forward with Paige. Because you're not even adopting this as, oh, potentially this is going to be my house one day. You know, something small that I caught, but I was like, mm, you were intentional with what you said, little boy. And he... So Dr. Vignana cuts straight to the chase. She's like, tell me what's happened. I know what's happened before, but tell me where you guys are right now. And he was like, yeah, when I found out about the baby, I was in a depressive state. And that's basically the reason for all of this. And it's like, okay, you finding out about the baby, I know that is a big thing. I get it. That's very jarring. I understand all of that. But let's not act like you started acting like a hole once you found that out. You were acting like an a-hole before you even met Paige. Just when we saw clips of you picking out your tuxedo and meeting with the other guys, there was already an energy about you that was very narcissistic and very materialistic and all this stuff. So a lot of people already had bad feelings about you when they first met you. This is before you knew about the daggone baby. So don't blame the baby for your behavior because you were acting like a butt before all of that. That's not a valid excuse for me. And I'm sure Dr. Viviano was like uh-huh okay yes i'm doing a video can you wait thank you so yeah so dr viviana is just asking them you know like what do you want what does Paige want and Paige got on my nerves because she was very basic with it she was like well all i really want is you know just i just want him to call me just call me once a day and Dr. Viviana was like, that seems very minimal. And I'm sure she was really saying, Dr. Viviana was saying a lot without saying a lot. Like she was saying stuff with her words. She was saying stuff with her eyes and her body language that she was not saying out of her mouth. So what she said out of her mouth was, that doesn't seem like a lot. What she said with her body language was, girl, are you sure that's all you want? You need to ask for more because you deserve a lot more than that. That's what she wanted to say, but she couldn't because she's under contract and she got to be professional. But I could tell that she wanted to say more. And then she asked Chris, like, okay, so that's all she's wanting so what about that and he just started kind of fumbling is like i just don't want to feel forced i don't want to feel pressure and she's like force it's once a day that's all she's asking for is to call her once a day how is that any pressure on you and Paige's like okay well then well then what do you want and i was like no Paige, that's the problem from the beginning you keep asking him what he wants stop asking this man that at this point who gives a freak what he wants he's already getting everything that he wants he got the baby mama on his side he got a child on the way he's always wanted a baby he got you as his wife that's adhering to his every whim and basically following him around and answering his calls all the time so he's good he has everything that he wants right now don't ask him what he wants because he's he's straight don't ever ask me that question again and dr viviana asked Paige, another part that pissed me off very point blank which no one has really asked her this particular question this way dr viviana looked in the eye and said why stay in this marriage i was like Thank you. Now, you know who should have been asking these questions? Her friends, who we still have not seen. Her mama, who we still haven't seen. We haven't seen any of her family and friends since episode one, when she told them she was getting married, and then maybe episode three, when she actually got married. We are at episode 10 right now. These people have disappeared in the thin air. We haven't seen them at all, which is still a big, big crawl in my hide. I don't understand why we're not seeing her family and friends, and why she's not being surrounded by people who support and love her. I don't get that at all. So that part's like, mm. and I know it's intentional that we don't see them. So that's another reason why it's pissing me off because I don't know what the reason is. Either way, 
Dr. Viviana, and there's another time where Dr. Viviana said something that I know she wanted to say more. So Chris is like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to be forced into calling, but, you know, I'd rather have face-to-face -face time so, you know, we can go out and we can do this. And Dr. Viviana's like, well, that seems more than calling. That seems like it would take more effort. So if you're willing to do that, why aren't you doing that? And Paige is like, yeah, I just don't understand. I mean, you know, all this back and forth. It's like, what are we doing? And Dr. Viviana said, yes, what are you doing? And she looked right at Paige, and I know she was saying, Paige, girl, get out now. Get out. What is you doing, girl? But again, she's professional. She couldn't say that. I could have said that because I don't have her credentials. But Dr. Viviana was basically like, I don't understand what we're doing here. So where it ended off is that Dr. Viviana basically told them, okay, there seems to be a disconnect when it comes to communication, when it comes to communicating what you need and just communicating in general, just talking. Basic things that most couples or anyone in a relationship does, they don't have that at all. So... And I also like that Paige and Dr. Viviana were looking at Chris crazy at the same time. And I could tell the way he was squirming that he wanted so bad to tell them to cut the cameras off or to turn the mics off. Because when he's put on the spot like that, he gets so uncomfortable because he doesn't, I believe he doesn't like being seen in a negative light or being seen as not the man. And because appearances are so big to him, anytime he has that kind of, not accusation light, but... Anytime he's forced to make sense of his actions or make sense of his words, he gets really just fidgety and childlike. And it's like, I don't care. I have absolutely no sympathy for him. I don't have sympathy for Paige anymore. It's like, you're putting yourself through this. So I can't be, I can't sympathize with you anymore because you are willingly putting yourself in this situation time and time again. So what she does is she takes out a piece of paper and starts writing down basically a schedule, like, okay, let's figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to get together. So she mentions like a Thursday or something, and he's like, okay, I can bring some food over. She's like, oh, okay, you know, maybe we can play card games. He was like, no. She's like, you don't play cards or you won't play cards? He's like, I won't play cards. She's like, which I did think was a weird statement to say. But he's like, what do we have a Bible study? And she looked at him and was like, are, are you serious? And he was like, yeah. And then he just talking head. He's like, I think that's a problem. We didn't put God in this from the beginning. And it's like, well, technically, Paige has been mentioning God this whole time. You have not. But, you know, sure, whatever. So that's what they decided to do. He comes over with some food. And he's, you know, they're doing the Bible study thing. And mind you, he brought this up. So she's like, oh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to you, you know, feeding me the word. And he was like, well, you know, I brought the actual food, so I figured, you know, you could feed me the word. And it's like, he's just one of those men that expects everything to be done for him or to him without him doing much effort, basically. And it's like, mm, that bothers me. Because even with conversation, she has to be the one starting the conversation. She's the one that did the Bible study. When they were on the honeymoon, she was the one that was praying for him. So again, you can't say, oh, you know, we should have God in this from the beginning. I don't know why we haven't. And it's like Paige has, actually. Anytime anybody asks her questions, even when Dr. Viviana asked her why I stay married, the first thing out of her mouth was, well, you know, the type of woman that God created me to be. And honestly, I tuned out after she said that because she's been throwing God into this the whole time. And I'm not saying she doesn't know God. And I can't judge her relationship with God. But the God that I serve, that I believe she serves as well, would never want his daughter to go through the stuff that she's going through. And yes, you signed up for the show. Yes, they, you know, linked you up with Chris or whatever. But this isn't necessarily a godly show. This isn't a show ordained by God. So don't assume that this person is the person you're supposed to really marry. This is just the card you got dealt. But stop throwing God into this. You know God didn't ordain this. God would never want this for your life. And it just, it bothers me that that's her constant excuse. And then when they're having dinner, Chris drops the bombshell because he's like, you know, you're my wife. I want to be honest with you. I want to tell you what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So he was like, for the baby mama, she, I guess, had a car accident years ago and it makes her scared to drive. But now that she's pregnant, she knows she needs a car so she can get around. So of course, you know, granted, I don't know her financial situation. I don't know if she didn't have the money to get a car. Who knows any of that? But Chris being the person, again, who wants to, it was all about appearances, went out and bought her a brand new BMW. So of course, you know, or brand new Benz, brand new Mercedes Benz. So of course Paige is like, oh, brand new. Okay. And he's like, well, yeah, why not? You know, she's, she's carrying my future king or queen. So why not, you know, have them in a brand new car? And Paige is like, 
the way he phrased that no matter what she said he was going to basically look at her like she's selfish or like she's crazy doesn't matter what if she came up with valid reasons why he shouldn't have bought her a car at all or should have bought her a used car he still would have flipped it around and kind of put it on page so i'm glad that it kind of ended where it did because i was like i don't need to see them on my screen any longer brianna and vincent they are so my favorite couple i think they're really cute together i don't even have a lot of notes on them i think that they're just really cute together i think that their communication is really good i think that you know, i just love watching them play and kiss and just hang out with each other and even when dr viviana was there and she was bringing some things to vincent's attention basically telling him that it sounds like you're trying to be perfectionist you're trying to look cool and smooth and when it doesn't go your way you kind of you know you crumble a little bit and brianna is not with you for you being perfect brianna's like yeah you impressed me just by being yourself and i love that when they started having that conversation they turned away from dr viviana and just literally focused on each other so i love that like no babe like i like you for who you are you don't have to impress me i like that you want to but just you being you is enough like we're all gonna make mistakes i don't do everything right you don't do everything right and that's okay and it was just a really sweet and tender moment so Again, not a lot of stuff to say for them at all, but I thought it was really cute and I still like them a lot. Haley and Jacob, I don't, I still don't think they're going to make it. Haley, I don't know. Like, she keeps saying that Jacob is doing all the right things. Everything I ask him to change, he's changing for me. He's, you know, doing, he's going out of his way to make me feel comfortable and make me feel, you know, good but she's struggling with the fact that she's not making a connection to him and i guess she keeps saying that she connects with people easily in her life in general but she's having a difficult time connecting to her husband and that's really stopping her from going past this friendship thing and dr viviana also discovered which i didn't know either that they haven't slept in the same bed since they moved into this apartment so she told them you know most intimate intimacy starts in the bedroom not necessarily sex but just intimacy in general like i want you guys to stop sharing a bed i want you to start kissing each other in the morning and kissing each other in the evening before you go to bed something that seems very simple but for Haley, she basically let know like it's, it's gonna be hard for me but i'm gonna try I'm, I'm giving it a try so it seems like she's willing to try but her heart really isn't in it and i i just don't think it's gonna go far and i think jacob kind of knows that as well but he's trying his best to make her comfortable because in his mind if i make her comfortable maybe she'll be comfortable doing things with me and the intimacy can grow and blah 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 blah. but at this point i also don't know how he feels about her really like they have good conversations looks like they kind of have fun together every once in a while but i don't know if he actually likes her like that or if he's just trying to make the marriage work because in his mind he's 38 and this is his last chance to be married so I don't have a clear idea of his feelings for her, really. So I don't know. I still don't think they're going to make it. I think it's just, uh, I think partly it wasn't a good match, but I also think Haley's just not, I don't think she's the marrying kind. I think that based off of her relationship history, it's very easy for her to run away. It's easy for her to shut down when things don't feel right for her. And I just think she's not, equipped to handle all the ups and downs that come with marriage so even though she wants to be married i think until she goes through some intense therapy to get through some of her issues she's never going to be a good wife for a person and that's my opinion i'm sticking to it and they're always you know they're always kind of boring as well so okay now oh and another thing that happened with Haley and jacob that i liked so Dr. Viviana met with both of them and then she came back and talked just with Haley and she brought up Haley's questionnaire because all of the couples when they first signed up with the show had to fill out this questionnaire online that had however many questions on it and she pulls it up to kind of remind Haley of the things that she asked for and how the things that she asked for are exactly the things that she receives and I put in my notes that I think it'd be a great idea that either for Dr. Viviana or one of the other experts whenever they meet up with the couples they should kind of bring up that questionnaire again and remind the couples of exactly what they asked for, what their deal breakers were, what kind of physical qualities they were looking for. Because sometimes you forget about those things. And it is interesting to kind of look back to see, oh, those things I asked for, are those things as important to me then as they are now? Does this person meet those things? Oh, they do. That's why the experts matched us up. I think it would just be kind of good to kind of take them back to that point. Because I'm sure filling out the questionnaire seems like years ago and they've probably forgotten 
But I thought it was interesting that she did that because I've never seen her do that before. And I just think that would be beneficial, I think, for the couples in the future if they do that as well. So Clara and Ryan, my first note is they are never going to have sex. Ryan, and it's really interesting the way Clara phrased it. Clara basically said that Ryan needs things to be unicorns and rainbows before he has sex, where Clara needs sex before it can turn to unicorns and rainbows, which is, I thought it was a perfect way to describe it, but also kind of sad because it's like, how do you reach a middle ground? But she also said they're doing everything. She was like, so we're having types of sex, but they're just not having penetration sex. So in her mind, what's the difference if we're literally doing everything else? I don't understand. But he puts it on such a high pedestal because he sees an emotional bond. At least for him, he experiences an emotional bond when he has sex. And it's a bond that can only be had if he has a strong foundation leading up to the actual act of sex. Where she admitted, you know, I for me, even though I've been in long relationships and I've said I love you to people and all that stuff, sex was always just sex. There was no bond there. There was no emotion there. I never felt a certain type of way about sex. It was just like, oh, okay, this is sex. I like it. And it's good. And she actually started getting emotional. And she was like, because he attaches sex with emotions, I'm afraid that when we get to that point, we have sex. If I don't have that emotional bond that he's looking for, I'm sad for him if I'm not able to give that to him. And it was the first time really seeing Clara. We've seen her be frustrated, like slightly frustrated. And we've seen her just be kind of silly and very vocal. But it was the first time really seeing her be vulnerable. So it was good to see that side of her. But it was like, oh, that's really sweet that she's thinking so hard about Ryan and really, you know, just thinking about the future with him and how she wants to please him in every way. So I thought that was really sweet. I don't know if the middle ground is still, but I don't know. I mean, I hope that they... I don't mind them as a couple and it seems like they're definitely comfortable with each other and I hope that it gets to that point for her. I think though if they make it to the eight weeks and they still have not had sex then I don't think she's going to stay around. Even if she likes Ryan she's already made it clear this is something she really needs and that's something she really wants and she is being patient with him but eight weeks is a long time. Sleeping next to somebody every single night who is your husband it's like why why aren't we doing this so I don't know. If they have sex before the eight weeks, I think they have a chance. But if they don't, then I think she's going to be out of there. And Ryan seems really stuffy. Um, and maybe we see a different side. Maybe she sees a different side of him when the cameras are gone. But I don't know. But I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with them. I think it would be very interesting to see. And then Virginia and Eric. Virginia has, again, surprised me the past couple episodes. I feel like she... Even though she hasn't been married that long, at least from viewers' perspective, it seems like she's matured through marriage. Just the kind of conversations that they're having, the way she views things, the way she expresses herself is like, wow, she's okay. I see you, Virginia. She genuinely wants the relationship to work. And she said something I thought was interesting. She was like, I think Eric and I are afraid to rock the boat. So there are a lot of topics that we avoid talking about because we don't want to hurt each other's feelings which is really interesting and obviously not a good thing to do when you're married you do have to kind of discuss things and it's not a matter of being afraid to hurt each other's feelings it's just a matter of figuring out the correct way to phrase the things that you're feeling so that you don't hurt the other person and, but you don't want to be in a situation where you don't feel like you can express yourself either so Dr. Viviana kind of helped them with that. And she said, you know, one thing, which I've never heard about this exercise before. She was like, one thing maybe to consider doing is set a timer for five minutes. And let's say you're the person whose turn it is to speak. Speak for five minutes about whatever you need to say. The other person has to listen. They can't step in and say anything else. They can't, you know, correct you or argue with you. They just have to sit there and listen. And five minutes is a long time. So even if the person finishes everything they have to say in five minutes, the other person at least gets a chance to really digest what's been said to them, figure out how it makes them feel, and figure out how or if they're going to respond. So I thought it was a pretty good exercise, and it seemed like it helped them when they did it. Because one thing that they talk about a lot are kids. He really wants kids. She's kind of 50-50. Like, oh, maybe, maybe not. And he was like, you know, if she doesn't want kids, like we're done. And that's another, that is one thing that bothers me about Eric is that I feel like he constantly says those kind of things, right? Where it's like, if we don't do this, we're done. Or if this doesn't happen, like it's over, like that's it. 
and he has these really hard set boundaries and I don't I'm assuming it's because he's been divorced before and he's like yo like I've been married so this is what I need and this is what I don't need kind of thing but I don't like the fact that he constantly says that to her because I feel like if you said that to me all the time I would feel like I'm constantly walking on eggshells knowing that that line of being done or being through with me is in your is in your mind is in your eyesight like oh so when she steps over that line it's over but it's like I would feel like I can't do anything. So I don't like that he says that to her. But she, and she's mentioned kids before just saying, you know, I'm 50-50, I don't really know, but never really gave a reason. So when they did this experiment of talking for five minutes, she told him, and he knew that she was a child of divorce, but she said that it was really rough. I was put in the middle a lot of the time. And even after my parents divorced, there was still so much fighting over child support and all this other stuff. And I ended up not talking to my dad for a while, live with my mom. She and I started having beef. And then I stopped talking to her and live with my dad. So like, it was just a bunch of stuff. And I never wanted to put a child through that. And even though I like you and I love you, I'm so afraid of putting a child in that environment because I know what that did to me. I'm still feeling the effects now as an adult. And I don't want to do that to an innocent child. And he was just really impressed with her talking that way because he was like, you've never explained this to me. And I think it really helped him see things in a different light and see her in a different light. Because the way they've been painting her all season is that she's the party girl and she's immature and she likes to drink and all that stuff. But the past two episodes, they haven't focused on that. And taking away that focus helps me see her in a new light as well, which I really appreciate. So I think that, and my note that I put on there is that they're progressing much better than I gave them credit for. I definitely, because of the way they painted her, I saw this going a lot differently. But it seems like they're really, they're getting along. The conversations are getting better and deeper. And they genuinely want to be around each other and genuinely want to make the marriage work. So my prediction now, Virginia and Eric, again, there's still a maybe for me instead of a hard no. There may be, Haley and Jacob are a no. Paige and Chris are a no and should have never been, really. Ryan and Clara, I'm going to give them a maybe for now. I had them as a yes. I'm going to give them a maybe. And Brianna and Vincent are still a yes for me. So we'll see what happens next week. I will review and recap episode 11 for you guys. And thank you guys so much for listening to me. If you have comments, if you agree or disagree on who I think is going to stay together, who's not going to stay together, please put it down below. I love communicating with the people who respond because this episode has been so incredibly juicy and dramatic and just enraging at times that more and more people are watching the show so i love communicating with fans of the show or people who kind of hate watch it so let me know and i will see you guys next week peace